is going on guys politics gaming here and today we are doing the next episode of the united states of america in the previous episode essentially what we did was we had a massive overview of our national economy and then we also uh invested more into our economy we're trying to help our economy grow and we also did uh withdraw troops uh from the nation of afghanistan so we are doing a lot of uh, stuff in terms of troop withdrawals in terms of the economy and we are just trying to make sure that we are set up in order to win uh, the midterm elections that are coming up in the month of November. Get a couple of messages right over here from our ministers, electric versus gasoline, to encourage the development of electric cars. I would suggest, Mr. President, progressively raising the tax on petroleum products. Just like tobacco, this will undoubtedly yield results in the long term, all whilst filling the state's coffers. Uh, our, uh, let's go over here to taxation, and our petroleum and energy product tax uh, has gone up a little bit within uh, the uh, the this series uh, that I have been operating. We were at about maybe 0 .5, uh, 0 .55. Uh, at the beginning of the game, we are now at 0 .6, uh, .065 uh, right now. So that is about six cents of the uh, petroleum and energy product tax. Um, maybe our goal would to would be to increase this. So I think in this episode right here, uh, we can uh, do something. Let's go ahead and increase this by just a tiny bit. Let's. Well, actually, let's go ahead and increase it by about 0 0.005, and then that will uh, generate about $12 billion uh, in revenue for the national government. And then let's go ahead and see what the reaction to this would be. Looks like the House of Representatives would be su in support of this, especially our Democratic colleagues on uh, uh, in the House of Representatives who have control over it. However, even though Republicans have control over the United States Senate, it looks like we have enough uh, support on the Democratic side, uh, as well as enough support from the Republicans that we seem to be able to in we will seem to be able to increase this uh, in terms of the tax. So let's go ahead and confirm this tax. I think we're going to pass uh, another tax. Uh, just to be able to uh, kind of offset the effects for one um, of the unpopularity of that and then two we will also be able to uh, generate just some more revenue uh, in other ways as we can so let's go ahead and do this let's see if congress can be behind something like that they don't seem to be all that excited for an increase in the deforestation tax however it's great that we do have a deforestation tax in the first place uh the tobacco tax no i don't think i'm going to touch that for right now as well tax on salt and animal fats in the agri-food sector could we introduce a tax similar to that what will be the reaction uh looks like congress really would like that if we did a tax on the uh, agri-food sector so so let's go ahead and uh, do that as well all right so it is now april 11th of 2022 and we have a couple of important messages that we need to go over uh, at the beginning uh, right here so let's go ahead and look at our unemployment record right here and then we all of our employment agencies and overall national employment rate for the last quarter stands at four percent at the reminder the rate in the previous quarter was about five percent well done we have made great progress overall the results are very good so that is awesome to see that our unemployment rate has fully recovered uh, from the recession that we had only last year uh, then our secretary of the treasury tells us that we have a 2.25 percent annual growth level as of right now and in the previous quarter we had a 1.23 percent growth rate uh, so in comparison that is really good that we have a two percent growth rate um, above from the 1.2 percent growth rate that we had in the previous quarter overall that is a one percent increase in our growth rate uh just in one quarter so that is great to see that our economy is still growing as the quarters uh, drag on then we have uh two uh things from our director of national intelligence and then it looks like that we have uh, dismantled two terrorist organizations in two different countries. The first one would be the Jihadist Caliphate in the nation of Iraq. We uh, dismantled the Jihadist Caliphate in one of their home countries, so that is awesome to see that our uh, national our anti uh, international anti-terrorism operations are bearing fruit, so we're not wasting our money on just uh, failed operations after uh, failed operation after failed operation. So that is awesome to see that we are uh, doing a lot in terms of anti-terrorism. 
uh, the Asian Islamic uh, fighters in uh, the nation of, or in the Republic of uh, Indonesia seem to have been beheaded, so that is awesome. We have also captured uh, the ringleader, so Nasir Rabi, and we have arrested him as well. Um, what are we going to do with him, though? Uh, the, and the terrorist organization that controls numerous cells in other, other countries around the world will also be impacted by our operation. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That is a great, one of the best anti-terrorism news uh, that I have ever heard in this game. So that is awesome to see that our anti-terrorism operations, again, are bearing fruit. We have another riot right now in the capital, Washington, D.C. So we're going to go ahead and take care of it. All right, and let's go over to some of our messages that we have. Everything looked good with the Mars 2020 uh, thing. And then law on tax assault and agri-food agri sector uh, tax has been passed, so that is awesome to see. Uh, space Y, we're not worried about that right now. Official congratulations from the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Indonesia uh, telling us congratulations for dismantling it, even though they don't like it whenever they, whenever someone else operates in their own territory, they will not mind it whenever you dismantle a terrorist organization that was such a big problem for them uh, in previous years. Uh, then sit in in defense of purchasing power and then have gathered in our upper, upper house square to organize a sit-in. Uh, so that is awesome, but we've already taken care of it. And then law on attacks on petroleum products has passed the House of Representatives and the Senate. So that is awesome to see that we are taking care of things and getting uh, the... Let's go over to transportation. Um, the goal of it is to increase this number right here, the number of electric vehicles in percentage of the other uh, countries. So if we look right here, we cannot click on it, but it does t uh, show us our value uh, in comparison to uh, the nation as a whole. So we do have about 4% of the, uh, the United States using electric automobiles, and that is directly uh, because of the increase in the fuel tax. So one of the easiest ways in order to both increase your production of uh, electric automobiles and utility vehicles, as well as to move everyone from gas powered cars to electric uh, automobile cars, uh, that is the easiest and best way uh, to do it is to increase your uh, uh, tax on petroleum and energy products. Again, that gives you a lot of, a lot of money uh, in the meantime, but also does help you transition away from gas-powered cars.
right, and at the end of that very long time lapse, uh, let's go ahead and look at some of the messages that I actually just uh, can't, just saw came up. Uh, looks like the Secretary of Defense, Ashley Smith, uh, has died. Unfortunately, uh, the funeral will take place next week. Do you want to attend the ceremony? Absolutely, we do want to appoint... Uh, not a, not a point, but we do want to attend his uh, a ceremony. So we do need to appoint a brand new Secretary of Defense. So let's go over to Secretary of Defense, appoint a new minister, and let's go ahead and see what kind of candidates we do have. Let's go ahead and look through. We have Tamara Lind. I don't know who that's supposed to be, uh, but we do have a couple. We have uh, Jack Ohama uh, that we could appoint as Secretary of Defense, the former the former commander. Uh, Commander-in-Chief, and then we have the former Secretary of State, Hilda Tinton, Tilton, uh, that is also another candidate that we could throw up there, but I don't think I'm going to do that as of right now. Let's go ahead and see. We have uh, James Landman, uh, that is also another candidate. We can ha also appoint Robert J.D., uh, who is also another uh, great uh, person. Let's go ahead and see. He He's a very immoral character, so we're not definitely not going to appoint him. Uh, let's go over here, Gerard Godless, and let's see, he is a pretty decent character. I mean, not the best character, but also not the worst. Uh, no scandals as of right now, and uh, no information available. Um, da -da 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 -da. Uh, I think I can go ahead and confirm him as the next Secretary of Defense, and let's go ahead and do that. And that is our next Sec Def. Uh, of the United States. He's 56 years old. Uh, so let's go ahead and continue to go on. Another thing, as we have been advancing through this uh, through this game, what I'm really trying to do is I'm trying to get up to about the foot of the uh, midterm election, and what we are seeing is that our deficit has been trending downward. Our deficit has been going down as our income has been rising. A low, it's This is most likely, um, if you actually go over to here, and then we go over to our growth forecast. Our growth forecast has been trending upward for several months uh, over the past several quarters we do see that our growth forecast is about to hit four percent uh, as of this uh, as of this month so if we look it has been going upward uh, this is our original level right here where this red line is so it is great to see how high this growth rate is uh, trending uh, and then we see that our GDP is now uh, just under 21 trillion dollars and then let's go ahead and compare our GDP to the Chinese GDP. Uh, the Chinese GDP is $17.2 trillion as of right now, and then the United States is about uh, $20.7 trillion uh, as of uh, the same time period. So that is great to see that the United States is doing better in terms of the GDP um, uh, compared to other countries, but most of this growth and most of this increased revenue is very likely just because of the actions that we have been taking on a micro level uh, in terms of our economic sectors. It looks, I mean, look at all these subsidies that we're handing out to the uh, to the industrial sector uh, as of right now. So it, it's kind of it's kind of like really bad that most of this is kind of dependent on what the government is doing. Uh, but at the same time, it is still a very good thing that the economy is doing way better than it's supposed to be doing uh, compared to what uh, uh, statistics we have at the beginning of the game. Uh, so let's go ahead and continue on, and I think we're going to go ahead and skip over to the next election.
All right, we are now in the month of October. We are about a one month away from the next midterm election. This is going to be the first midterm election that Joe Biden has gone through and is going to be the first election uh, that I have gone through as of this game. So this is going to be uh, one of the most important elections because if we cannot win both houses of Congress, then essentially we will not be able to pass many different things that we essentially need to pass in in order to have a complete Biden administration. So one of the goals of this, uh, of, of the end of this video is to make sure that we can win and keep the House of Representatives or even try to expand our authority in the House of Representatives, as well as to take the Senate from the Republican Party. The Republicans seem to have 53 seats in the United States Senate and 200 seats exactly uh, in the House of Representatives. So we need to increase the amount of, of, of seats that we have in both houses and if we are able to do that then we'll basically be able to do uh, essentially what, whatever we want so long as it does pertain to democratic policies which is going to be very easy for me to do that it's just a matter of getting it past congress uh, in order to do that it looks like that the father of joe biden has died so that is uh, the second time that we have had to attend a funeral uh, uh, relating to the family of the president of the United States in one year, just not 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 two years. I mean, not three years, four years, five years. Literally one year. His mom and his dad die. So uh, that is a very unfortunate circumstance uh, for President Joe Biden. Um, it looks like that our uh, 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 growth rates seem to be about yet yeah, three point nine percent. Look at that. Uh, our growth rate is a very very healthy healthy amount right now we are just growing this economy more than we have really ever been able to grow the economy in previous episodes this is just a great amount of economic growth that we are that we are seeing uh, at the at the end of this episode right here we have legislative elections started the election campaign and then dismantlement of terrorists and then a funeral and then let's go ahead hurricane in massachusetts uh, looks like the victim compensation estimated at nearly $4.65 billion. Let's go ahead and give them about $6 billion, just extra. Uh, the reason that I give them so much more is I think it's accounting for things like inflation as well as other things. So if you give them that exact amount that they're asking for, sometimes it doesn't, um, some money gets siphoned away for some reason. I don't know if it's because of corruption or something like that but for some reason the money that you end up giving to them doesn't not all of it makes it to them uh, unfortunately so then let's go ahead and see what's going on in vermont 400 and oh i thought it was going to be billion 451 million dollars let's go ahead and give them about a billion dollars in recovery aid uh, for them and then legislative elections start of the election campaign the election campaign has just begun uh, mr president the results of the elections were determined the house of representatives new political color as the legislative chamber will have the power to oppose your policy uh, let's hope that the votes are favorable to us in 26 days and that the democratic union will have the majority of seats it's, again it's going to be extremely important for us uh, to keep the house of representatives as well as to uh, take control of the senate it is not going to be uh, uh an impossible feat or uh, uh most of this is actually a part of your uh, uh approval rating but we are also going to uh, go over here i think i think what we can do so we can go over to party let's go ahead and do a fundraiser it's going to be about 12 million well actually uh, looks like we can't do a fundraising campaign uh, unless it's a presidential election period. So even whenever it's a midterm legislative election period, doesn't look like we're not we're able to do that. But I think I should be able to go over to key figures. Let's go over to businessmen, and let's uh, ask this guy uh, for some money. This is going to be the first time I've ever actually met with him in this entire uh, series. Uh, Tom Baden, the polls favorite, 48% of the vote in favor of our party, and then let's go over here. Uh, wow, look at that. Uh, let's go over to the United States. Wow, she hates us, so she is not going to give us any room uh, uh, to to grow our amount of seats. 48%. Uh, and then the rest is going to be, be taken by the Republicans. We can possibly caucus with the Green Coalition, but we're not going to be able to caucus with the Independent Party uh, or the Republican Party. So it looks like the third parties are going to be doing an exceptional job uh, in this election period so we need to 
uh, do a few certain things. All people have been compensated from the hurricanes. And then let's go over here. Ask uh, Champagne, tell me his radiance. Uh, speak highly of me in public and then encourage me at the next elections. Unfortunately, he's not going to do that. Ask him to put in my party and then we can end that meeting there. All right, and just days before the uh, midterm elections, what we're going to go over here and do, we're going to go uh, to political parties and we're going to publicly criticize a political party. Political parties differ from unions, pressure groups, and other movements by their vocation to hold power and implement their political projects. The political game of alliances and misalliances is directly related to the objective uh, to exercise power. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the conservative rightist party, the Republican Party, and we are going to criticize uh, the Republican Party. And then as well, we are going to criticize the center-right independent party, or as, also known as the independent party in the United States. It's actually the uh, real-life replication of the libertarian party uh, we are now several days we have a hurricane hurricane bonnie is now coming toward the united states just days before the election so hopefully it does not hit us before election day because that will uh, most likely hinder the vote uh, in several different regions so let's go over we have about two days until the election and let's uh do unions um let's do Union for Popular Defense, and it looks like the unions do not like the Democratic Party as of right now, so uh, from this election on into uh, the 2024 election, and the elect, uh, looks like the hurricane hits the United States just before, the day before election day, and it is a very unfortunate circumstance uh, for a lot of different voters in the state of New Jersey that hit the state of New Jersey and is about to hit into New York. So uh, that really should, uh, hopefully that does not hurt our chances in the House of Representatives or the Senate. If we do lose control of the House of Representatives, I'll definitely blame it on that hurricane that just hit us. Uh, the elections begin tomorrow some, uh, morning across the country, Mr. President. Some 282 million voters are called on to express their opinions through the ballot boxes. And then we'll have the results the day after tomorrow. So again, we will be going to the next day. Um, party Kyle, Ky Kylie McKay's party out of the leading trio with 11% of the votes. Still a very high amount of vote that the Green Party is about to take from the House of Representatives and the United States Senate. Uh, so let's go over to elections, see what that is. Our uh, numbers have dropped by about 2%. Uh, so hopefully that does not reflect into the uh, election day numbers. Alright, so it looks like the election has come to an end. 48.15% of the vote has gone to the Democratic Party, 15% has gone to the Independents, 26% has gone to the Republicans, and nine, almost 10%, 9.6% goes to the United States Green Party Coalition. Uh, this is a, a, a not the best election that I was really hoping for, but uh, we do see that. Uh, let's go ahead and... Uh, go over to close and then let's go to the next day and then hurricane hurricane and then 69 percent turnout around the same as the real life uh turnout in the united states 2020 election let's go ahead and accept that thanksgiving uh meeting right there and then let's go over to parliament and let's see wow look at this uh, Democrats do have a majority of the seats in the United States House of Representatives, uh, but uh, the, the the United States Green Party Coalition seems to have gotten 41 seats, the Independents have gotten 66 seats, and Republicans have definitely lost from their original 200 seats to about 116 seats. That is a very unfortunate number that they have gotten in this in this election. Let's go over to the Senate and see what happened over there. Looks like it's about the same around here. 47% of the seats have gone over to the Democratic Party. Uh, nine seats have gone over to the United States Green Party Coalition. 
Uh, 16 seats have gone over to the independents, and then 28 seats have gone over to the Republicans. Republicans, again, have lost their majority, but the it uh, looks like that we do have a mandate. So it does look like even though uh, we did lose a lot of seats to the independent parties, we do have a majority of the seats. So we do effectively have a mandate as long as we are co uh, uh, not really coalizing, but we are uh, have a coalition with the United States. States Green Coalition. So as long as these guys caucus with us, with their most of the time they should, uh, we will be introducing policies that they would definitely uh, vote for and like. So we definitely will uh, see that they um, will help us out in the future. Uh, but that is the election and that is this episode. Guys, thank you guys so much for watching this. Um, in the next episode, uh, we will uh, effectively go over to the next year of January 2023 where the beginning of Congress uh, will begin and then once we do that that will uh, effectively give us a mandate so we have captured a mandate everything that we have done we have recovered the economy and then that has turned out in an election even though the election did not uh, have the Democratic Party win enough seats to effectively on their own have a majority we do have a coalition of enough parties and seats that do give us a majority in the house of representatives as well as the united states senate thank you guys so much for watching this episode if you guys want to see more just hit that bell notification icon so you do not miss a single episode of the united states and then guys i will see you guys once i come back from christmas break so uh this will be the last episode until i can make another one after christmas break so again thank you guys so much for watching this episode and thank you guys so much for being a part of this channel and if you are not a subscriber to this channel i definitely do you do uh, recommend that you subscribe and help me out in the future so again uh, leave a like subscribe to the channel if you are new and i will see you guys in the next episode merry christmas happy holidays and i'll see you guys there